This video brought to you by Loot Crate. Go to trylootcrate.com slash halocanon and use promo code BRIDGE10 to save 10% on a new subscription. Stick around to the end for more details. In the early days of Halo, multiplayer was just another mode. It was fun action that you didn't need to think too deeply about. Certainly lore nerds would get excited over map descriptions and how they fit into the universe, maybe small connections to the lore such as the map Highlands being set on an actual Spartan 2 training facility. But that was it. Occasionally you'd get mentions of Spartan training such as with Last Resort's description, or the odd mention of Spartan clones in the description for Chiron TL-34, but at the end of the day, the multiplayer was never anything to give too much serious thought to. When 343 took over the franchise, they decided to change things up. Multiplayer, now called War Games and contained under the Infinity menu option, would be part of the canon, same as Campaign. We've created a fairly compelling and fairly convincing reason why Red Spartans can fight Blue Spartans. I'm not sure if it's all that compelling a reason, but the direct ties to canon are something I enjoy. Over the years, though especially recently, I've seen a number of people somewhat confused about how War Games fits into the canon. Simply put, it's all a simulation. However, there is a bit more to it, if you enjoy getting into the deeper lore. The War Games Simulator is a complex machine, using millions of pneumatic risers overlaid with holograms and hard light to create highly detailed environments for Spartan Force to train in. In addition, simulated sensory information is fed directly through a Spartan's neural lace to make the training all the more realistic. So basically, the War Games Simulator creates actual environments that the Spartan Force are physically interacting with along with each other. In universe, the War Games Simulator first appeared around January of 2553, though this primitive version lacked the AI driven targets of later versions, meaning it was traditional War Games in a simulated environment against living targets. We can see this in Halo Initiation with Sarah Palmer and the first group of Spartan Fours training against Marines. AI driven targets would be added by March of 2555, however. And of course, by 2558, we have the War Games as it's presented in Halo 4 and 5, though mostly 4. When 343 took over, they built almost every aspect of Halo 4's multiplayer around their new lore, or more accurately, applied lore to just about every aspect. Spartans can indeed customize loadouts, the armor mods seen in Halo 4 or 5 are all canon, as is SR or Spartan rank. When Spartans reach SR 50 within war games, they are permitted to select from one of eight specializations, or more than one if they so choose. The level of lore integration in Halo 4 was truly astounding. 343 really committed to the idea for better or worse, though I personally thought it was a great idea. While the most well-known war game simulator is located on board the UNSC Infinity, there are several spread throughout human space. Anvil Station, the main host of the Anvil Initiative, is where a number of joint UNSC Swords of Sanghelios training exercises would be held. So for anyone wondering, no, lore is not the reason 343 hasn't included playable elites in the last two main entry titles. 343 have never stated this, nor implied it. Any notion has been a fan fabrication. Anyway, besides Infinity and Anvil Station, Halo 5 introduces us to the Munera platforms. Created shortly after the inception of the Spartan 4 program, these stations host Spartan 4 matches, often sponsored by weapon and armor manufacturers. This allows the corporation to analyze the raw data of their products and better enhance them. Munera platforms also seem to host the majority of breakout matches. The maps created for this game mode are the closest we get to see to the raw war game simulator, without some of the more advanced holography and sensory input. And it's not just Spartans and the occasional elite that utilize war game simulators. Regular members of the armed forces use them too, sometimes for training, sometimes for inter-service events. Olympia Vale participated in one such event, and this, along with her exemplary service during Operation Farstorm, led to an offer to join the Spartan 4 program. The maps we play in Halo 4 and 5 are all recreations of actual locations within the Halo universe, taken from detailed scans, partial records, or remote survey data. Details can be changed at the discretion of the designer, however, such as with the map Truth featuring a blockade runner rather than the canonical CCS-class battlecruisers. In addition, we have Forge maps, created from either incomplete scans, such as Orion, a recreation of mysterious structures popping up on Installation 05, or created by cartographers. So yes, Forge is canon. In-universe, the UNSC Cartographer Initiative was a program to recruit map designers utilizing the in-universe version of Forge. 
I wouldn't put too much thought into certain game types and maps, though. I'm not so sure how Sumo would fit into the canon. So, if Halo 4, 5, and Online's multiplayers are all considered canon, where does that leave previous titles? According to 343, the game types and maps can all generally be considered canon. Many maps from the Bungie Halo games have official War Games designations, and in the first issue of Halo Escalation, we see a group of Spartan 4s playing Invasion. Don't take this to mean the entire multiplayer experience of these games is canon, however, just the maps and game types. The classic trilogy is pretty clear that you're playing as Spartan 2s, and while some locations are known to be training ground for Spartans, such as the Chiron facility, most don't fit into the lore if you're assuming a large number of Spartan 2s are present. Reach you could make a different argument for, given that many surviving Spartan 3s did integrate with the Spartan branch, but again, it's best to just consider the maps and game types canon rather than the entire multiplayer experience. There's been no official word on whether Firefight makes the grade, but given that Warzone Firefight is a thing in Halo 5, I see no reason to assume that the classic Firefight can't be considered a canon training simulation. Other canon elements include the multiplayer announcer. You can actually find an easter egg on the Halo 4 mission shutdown related to this. War game simulations offline. Killing spree postponed. Respawning also seems to have an in-universe counterpart, as evidenced by a Wargame scorecard included with the Halo 4 Limited Edition. It shows the result of a match between Fireteam's Majestic and Castle. Each team has a significant number of kills and assists. While it is certainly possible that matches last multiple rounds in-universe, the assist numbers specifically indicate, to me, that the respawning must have some sort of in-universe counterpart. Maybe a dead Spartan is pulled beneath the training deck and pops up somewhere else. Maybe they're given a location to head to on the map before they can rejoin the fight. Dead bodies and Promethean disintegration effects, of course, could be created by the Wargame Simulator. Within Halo 5, we know that Weapon Balancing 2 is part of the simulation. The legendary Spartan laser, Selene's Lance, is noted as having additional recoil in war games. If you've ever wondered whether gameplay reflects lore in any significant manner, there's your answer. Now, in-universe, I can't imagine why the UNSC would want to misrepresent weapons like that, but hey, there it is. To me, though, this would indicate that the weapons used are likely holograms and hard light. Maybe there are props that the Spartans actually carry around that have holographic representations overlaid, but yeah, largely fake. An alternate idea is prop weapons that fire tactical training rounds, such as those seen in Halo 4 Forward Unto Dawn. The pellets, whether taking the place of rockets, bullets plasma, etc., could temporarily lock up a Spartan's armor whenever it was hit, simulating real-world damage. The last thing I want to discuss is armor. Obviously, there are instances where actual armor is used in wargame simulations. We can see this in certain armor descriptions, and I even brought it up when discussing Munera platforms. However, there are oddities that indicate this might not always be the case. Athlon is an armor created specifically for wargames, and the Timmy helmet, yes, that's canon, is described as a simulation glitch. So I have to wonder if, perhaps most of the time, Spartans train with basic armors like Athlon, but perhaps holograms are overlaid that make it look like the normal Mjolnir they wear or something. And I think that just about covers all things war games related. There's definitely a bit of convolution and questionable logic here and there, but generally speaking, making war games canon is one of my favorite decisions from 343. So, how about you? Did this help? Did I forget anything? And how do you feel about multiplayer being canon? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, this has been Halo Canon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to give a like and consider subscribing and sharing this video around. Also, consider subscribing to Loot Crate. By going to trylootcrate.com slash halocanon and using promo code BRIDGE10, you can save 10% on a new subscription to the base Loot Crate offering. Loot Crate is a monthly subscription box service for epic geek and gamer items and pop culture gear.